the wires are wiring. Okay, it is Tuesday, 12 noon Pacific Standard Time, and this is the Architects and Heroes live stream show. Today, we have a really special guest, and it seems like every week we've got someone new that we've known for a long time that we're introducing to you, but today is extra special because we've got DF Tram in the building virtually. Thank you. So 12, 12 noon Pacific Standard Time, 9 p.m. Croatian time? Actually, it's 8 p.m. because uh, I forgot the time went back actually last uh, this last weekend. So we're actually 8 p.m., eight hours ahead right now just for one week. Okay, and then and then we're back to nine. Well, everybody yeah. knows, you know, time is a social construct anyway. <laughs> exactly. Dylan, it is excellent to see your face, and it's been uh, a minute. In fact, we were just talking offline about this, that the last time that I had eyes on you, you were DJing my birthday party in San Francisco with, uh, with Jonah Sharp of Space Time Continuum um, at my friend Greg's loft. And uh, it, it feels like it was a week ago. Uh, and I guess that's just sort of the, you know, yeah. how, the, how the space time continuum. Functions. Yeah. But yeah, um, cool party. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. since since we've talked last, you've moved to Croatia. Mm -hmm. um, you've, you've built a community uh, in and around Europe. Um, you March of this year, you uh, released a new record as Black Gage, which is part of a, a duo with you and uh, experimental musician Vili. Yes. Um, you've got a new Lovers Radio in the mix. But let's, yes. let's start here. Um, where have you, since we've talked last, talk to me about the journey from San Francisco to Croatia. Wow, yeah, it's been, it's been a trip really actually. Um, a lot has happened in four years. Uh, I always wanted to move to Europe, but then uh, I had an opportunity to work with uh, my heroes, Alex Patterson and youth. Uh, so I went okay. to England to do- Wow, I'm just gonna stop there and say, wow, that's a big deal. <laughs> yeah, that was quite a trip. I think what we froze a second. Are we back? Yeah. Yeah, we're back. We're back. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah. That that was a trip. So I um, I came to do some recording, and uh, yeah, I basically decided I was going to stay in Europe. You know, one way or another, um, and I think for me, chill out music is. Uh, always been very strong here in Europe, um, more so than the US. Uh, so I felt it was a good move actually to bring me closer to the music that I loved, you know, and the people that I loved and work, was working with, you know. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been a strange trip. I never would have imagined myself in Croatia to be sure. So uh, it's really cool, but it's been an adventure, yeah. Can you talk to me a little bit about how you connected with Alex Patterson of the Orb and with Youth, and how you got involved um, with with them in terms of recording? And I'm going to turn off this other laptop over here so I can we can maybe reduce the drag on the stream. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Better. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, no problem. Good. Uh, so, um, yeah, tell me a little bit about how you ended up working with Alex Patterson and youth. Um, well, it's sort of a long, sort of convoluted story. But um, as you probably know, I've been a big fan of the Orb and chill out music for a long time. They were, you know, uh, the Orb was a huge influence on me. So uh, I used to go to their shows all the time and uh, wait for Alex Patterson and Thomas Feldman, you know, wait for them to come out backstage and give them CDs um, and try and talk to them and, you know, learn about the craft and what they were doing. And, uh, yeah, um, I started to get to know uh, Thomas Feldman and uh, Alex. Uh, I did an interview with Thomas Feldman back in San Francisco probably about 15 years ago maybe. Um, and that sort of sort of started my journey with uh, Thomas and Alex and the Orb. Uh, after they heard that I was also doing chill out music, they invited me to do some shows with them. Um, yeah, and it sort of just snowballed from there. And you know, uh, 
me and Alex have developed a good relationship, you know, because he knows what a good uh, uh, chill out uh, 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 disciple I am, I guess you could say. And uh, yeah, we uh, started exchanging music and uh, yeah, he was like, why don't you take this album to youth? I think he'll really like it when I sent him my uh, album, Serenite and Fenite. And uh, yeah, I had actually recorded that album in San Francisco but remixed it in London with youth and Alex and some of uh, youth's engineers there. So it was a really interesting experience to sort of have a reinterpretation of the album that I had recorded in San Francisco, now under the new uh, sonic wizardry of youth and Alex and uh, his engineers there. That is a, that is a, a, an amazing story. And, and I think it's great that, um, you know, you have, I mean, saying that you're a good chill out disciple is just a, an understatement because my first encounter with you was when you were on Mondays at 26 Mix doing the ambient night that Jonas uh, had had put together. Uh, what was the name of that night? Tranquility Base. Tranquility Base, right. And that's also where um, Sean... Yeah, well, that's what I've been saying. Like we met, yeah, yeah. You know, through that through that community of people mm -hmm. um, at Twenty Six Mix when I started doing the Under the Radar shows, um, and yeah, it was just such a crazy set of circumstances, and and it's been so cool to see the progression of your your DJ career and your music career, and kind of seeing what you have done, um, you you know, just so consistently. So you know, I would say you're the you're the, uh, you know, if, if there should, if there's ever a dictionary definition of what a disciple of chill out um, should be, your picture should be right there, you know. Um, you. Yeah. So, so, so you were, you went on tour with the Orb. You, you moved to Europe. You connected with Alex Patterson and Youth. You collaborated, uh, did some recording, and then, um, you know, moving from. So you were living in Malta, correct? Yeah, I actually moved from San Francisco to Malta and uh, I could only stay there three months with my American uh, visa. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I was looking for a way to stay in Europe so I could come to Croatia and sort of, my plan was to come to Croatia and wait out my time before I could go back to Malta. Um, but I liked it so much in Croatia and, uh, yeah, I just decided to stay here and it's much easier actually where Croatia is, um, for traveling around Europe and, uh, it's just a beautiful place here too as well. And, yeah. Tell me a little bit about the, I guess, the cultural differences that you've encountered there and then, um, kind of how, how your creative process works there um, because I know, you know, you spent, you know, a long, 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 long time in the Bay Area and and to have different sort of creative communities and different collaborators and different people in your environment, you know, uh, must have kind of shucking your process up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, experience for me is what feeds my music, you know, and I think coming to a new place and a new environment with a new culture uh, really helped me push uh, push my music further and the ideas that I had further. Even just the sounds of, of cities sound different, you know. Uh, and Croatia is a very uh, chill sort of place, very relaxed sort of vibe, very strong cafe culture here. Uh, you know, outside my window I have a cafe and it's full, like, uh, from the morning until the evening, you know, people sit here and enjoy their time. Uh, so I like that about Europe and Croatia especially has that very strong laid back uh, culture, uh, which obviously uh, lends itself well to someone like me who's very much into chill out and relaxing, you know. So um, I think the pace here is just a lot slower, you know. It's not so hustle and bustle as San Francisco is, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, sort of taking me out of my comfort zone, I think, helped me to grow, you know. Uh, personally and you know uh, just see it, things in a different light and perspective how long have you been over there now um, I've actually been here uh, two years almost exactly two years uh, yeah so 
yeah, it's been it's been amazing, really. Um, and Croatia is a beautiful country, so uh, if you've never visited, you should come check it out. I uh, as soon as the travel restrictions are lifted, you will find an, a a new friend. Yeah, on your <laughs> for sure. Actually, Croatia is one of the few places Americans can travel to right now. Actually, we can. Yeah, you can. Oh, the- well, I'm on my way. I'll see, <laughs> I'll see you in the next 24 hours. That's great news. Thanks, Dylan. I appreciate the extended <laughs> offer. Call Alex. Yeah, call man. you. It's on. Anytime. <laughs> Chill out party right here. Man, I I will take you up on that most definitely. I just definitely. mark my word for that. Um, so I want to I want to kind of talk about a couple of particular things, and uh, maybe we can do it sequentially. So you said you've been, you know, out. Uh, in Croatia for two years now. Yeah. Um, so this is 2020. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Obviously, it's 2020. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a fucking nightmare. Um, yeah. But it's we're in 2020. Um, you know, 2018 um, was the um, was the tour where you were opening for the Orb. Um, mm-hmm. This was in support of the Serenite Infinite mm-hmm. um, that record for you. And then um, you had, you know, remixes by Mixmaster Morris, Irresistible Force. Um, you know, there's just, there's a, a, a Copay Sweet Rice. Um, mm-hmm. you collect, I mean, there's just a lot to unpack, uh, mm-hmm. with this. So could you tell me the story? Um, obviously we kind of know how you got into the, into the orb camp, mm-hmm. camp orb, if mm-hmm. you will, kind of the yeah. extended group there. Yeah. And then, um, t- maybe talk to me about, you know, uh, the album uh, creation process, producing the album, and then uh-huh. and then subsequently going on tour with them back in, in 2018. Yeah. Um, well, as I said, the album was recorded in San Francisco, and it took me probably about two years to really finish that album. Uh, and I had a home studio in San Francisco, uh, and, you know, I sent the, that demo when I finished it, I sent it to so many labels and got many rejections, you know, uh, for that album. Nobody really wanted it, you know. Um, so when I sent it to Alex and he liked it, I was really happy that he liked it, you know. Uh, and he was like, you know, there was a couple tracks that he said, oh, youth is really going to like this track. Um, and... So yeah, it sort of morphed from from my little sort of vision uh, into this bigger thing, you know, and uh, getting Morris to do a mix. And really it was a dream come true. I got to work with my favorite artists, you know, Mixmaster Morris and and The Orb, you know, I can really uh, ask for more, you know. And they've all been really cool, you know. uh, Morris actually has another mix coming out, a remix of one of the uh, Serenity Infinity tracks coming out on a new uh, remix EP that should be out. By the end of the year, actually, um, that's excellent, man. That's uh, that's a, such, such an exciting story altogether. I mean, you know, it's one thing to be able to kind of fully realize, you know, the completion of a full album like that because it's it's a process. I mean, it's a lot of work. It's a process, and um, you know, I I had been on ice for some time. You know, I uh, I'm a dad now. I've got a uh-huh. lot of things on my plate, and you know, I. Uh, in the past nine months have started working on a new record and I've been doing this, um, with Mark pistol, uh, of consolidated and me beat oh, manifesto cool. and Hercules and love affair. Oh, wow. And there's not one time I walk into the studio at room five and sit down behind that deck and just kind of be like, Whoa, <laughs> you know, this is a, this is a big deal. And I'm sure that there, there must've been that, that moment for you sitting with you, like, Fucking youth, man. I mean, like you know, yeah, youth, yeah, yeah. Alex Patterson, yeah, yeah, yeah. Professor Moore. I mean, it's like yeah. you know, I mean, when you when you have have are coming from the world that we come from, and to be able to not only sort of like get to meet the people that are your are your idols in that field that are that are the geniuses in that field, but to be able to sit down with them and work in that context, it must have been amazing. Yeah. It sort of, uh, it feels very surreal, actually. And, you know, a couple surreal things happened to me, you know, over the years with Alex. Uh, for example, I remember after one of the Orb shows, I gave Alex a CD. 
Uh, and I didn't hear anything from, from Alex about it for years. But then uh, one day I'm uh, in a club with my friend Future BC and he's DJing and I hear this sample coming on and I go, oh cool, you're playing one of my tracks uh, to Future BC. And he said, no, this is the new uh, Alex Patterson project, the trans uh oh, I think we got a snag said, here. Oh my God, Alex has sampled the CD that I had given him after. So it was, it was like uh, crazy. It's like I had been train spotting these samples all the years, these years looking for orb samples, and now he's gone and sampled one of my records. So it was like a, something really uh, mind blowing for me to have something like that happen and really come full circle, you know. Um, really a crate diggers and samplers uh, dream that's uh that is that is amazing that that's <laughs> i mean that is that is one of those you know that is amazing um <clears throat> so uh you know let's fast forward a little bit 2018 uh, you toured with the orb um yeah. and and you know fast forward until now you're in croatia you're working on material um tell me about underhill which is your um uh the record that's a collaborative EP that you uh, record as Black Gage with, uh, and that's a, a duo project with uh, with Vili. Tell me a little bit about that project and how that came about. Yeah, so when I first moved to Croatia, uh, Mixmaster Morris uh, suggested I meet up with Vili, who he had met at Space Mountain. Space Mountain is a festival put on by youth in Spain. Um, and so Vili and Morris met and so, uh, when I came to Croatia, Morris suggested that I meet up with Billy, and we hit it off instantly. I went over to his studio here in Zagreb and uh, brought my laptop, and we just started making music. Just, I think the first day we met, you know, uh, so it's just, you know, it was just natural to want to put something together with him, and uh, he has very uh, good sensibilities when it comes to working in the studio, and uh, I think a better set of ears really behind um, monitors than I do uh, in, as an engineer, you know, so uh, it really helped uh, bring that album to life. Uh, I think it's a bit of a darker album, um, but it goes well with uh, 2020 for sure with all the things <laughs> happening. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, um so that's officially out now. Is it is it a digital release? Do you have do you have physical it, it copies? Is, it is it is just a digital release right now, but we mm -hmm. hope to uh, release it eventually on vinyl. This has that's been on uh, it, it's only released on uh, like digital platforms and Bandcamp right now. Mm -hmm. We wanted to do it sort of uh, independently. Uh, so yeah, this is, this release is all independent. So tell me a little bit about, you know, when you sit down and you collaborate with somebody either for the first time or if it's an ongoing relationship, how, how does that work? Is there, is there a process that you adhere to is, or is it just very organic in studio? I think it's very organic. You know, um, a lot of times you can sort of feel people out, you know, um, even before you start working with them of how they're going to be in the studio, you know, and, uh, Billy, I really didn't know much about him, but it just came naturally, you know, he had um, stuff going in Ableton and then I would just come in with the layers and the samples and, you know, uh, sometimes just an iPad uh, and layering things uh, uh, over what he was doing. Uh, but every situation is different, you know. Uh, I'm working on another project right now with someone in the UK and we're, we're just working uh, online and trading files back and forth, you know. Um, so, so every project is different, you know, and, uh, that's, what's interesting about music and, um, which really makes me want to continue to make music with different people because it gives me more ideas and more, uh, uh, pushes me in different directions that I normally wouldn't go into, you know, um, but I have no real set tools. Basically Ableton is, is my main, uh, uh digital workstation that I use, um, but everything, you know, from harmonicas to uh, melodicas to the turntable to the iPad to Moogs, um, everything can come into the mix, you know, at any moment, you know. Um, that's what I like about uh, electronic music, too. It has that, you know, there are no rules to it, you know. Uh, 
And I think that's especially true about chill out music. Now, you know, you have as an artist over the years, highly um, focused on the visual element as well as the audio element. And, and I would argue the interplay, right, between those two things. So when you're, um, you do a weekly show, Chillin' with Dylan, mm -hmm. uh, and that show, when does that happen? That happens uh, every Monday night at 7 p.m. my time here. Okay. Um, so that would be um, 11 a.m.? Yeah. Uh, so Mondays yeah. at 11 a.m. Um, I always try to forward it when I see it in the streams somewhere, yeah. you know? Yeah, I, um, I, because uh, I, get, I, I get kicked off of Facebook uh, a lot of times because of uh, copyright material and stuff like that. I always upload the mixes to Mixcloud. Um, Mm -hmm. after the show. Um, oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. We'll share some of those links though, to the archives of the shows, because I mm -hmm. think it's just so incredible the way, can you tell me, well, before we jump into that, um, mm -hmm. you know, from, to get back to sort of that, that process thing, the visual element, um, the film element, the kind of visual dimension. And, and like I said, this is a, even in an audio way, like when I listen to you, do your DJ sets, there are a lot of um, film samples. There are a lot of um, samples that come from television, that come from instructional videos, that come from these really, yeah. and, they, and, and out of context and with what you're playing, it's really a fascinating way to do it, um, the way yeah. that you incorporate that in. Um, could you tell me a little bit about I guess that element, not just the sampling of films, but also how the sort of cinematic visuals impact what you do. Because I know you put out a, a visual mixtape at one point. You, you, did, yeah, you did something with I, I, Yeah, yeah. I've actually done a few uh, visual sort of movie pieces where I sort of uh, try and tell a story almost uh, in a cinematic way, you know, uh, using all different types of uh, material. It's basically, I think, sort of a peek inside my head, you know. <laughs> if you were to unscrew my head and look inside, you might see a lot of this imagery, you know. It's, uh, memories I have of watching this stuff when I was younger. My brother was a big film fanatic, so he would show me all these weird movies. Uh, and he's actually done a lot of my visuals for me. Uh, and he's an, he's an amazing, uh, creative person as well, but he's more on the visual side. So it was sort of a perfect uh, opportunity to work with my brother. And uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's just something that I was always interested in that I wanted to incorporate into my music. Uh, film and cinematic ideas were very important, uh, I think artistically for me. And when you're incorporating those elements, the visual elements, um, do you mm -hmm. have um, do you take those straight from the sources themselves or do you have like a, a, a library of samples uh, that are that are already, you know? Both. I mean, sometimes I just find really cool stuff on YouTube. Uh, other times my brother has a huge library of films um, that he'll pick from and send me samples and say, oh, this would be cool. Um, and we work that way a lot. Uh, uh -huh. Sometimes I find- Do you still collaborate with your brother? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's great. Collaborate. Yeah, yeah. We did a video uh, last year that we showed at Space Mountain, actually, Youth Party. Um, and that's available on YouTube as well to watch. Is uh, is Space Mountain a chill out? Oh, man. I had a little laptop drop here. That's not good. Hold on. <laughs> Please hold. <No> <laughs> um, is Space Mountain a chill out party? Um, I would say it's more, uh, it's definitely, it's geared towards psychedelia and chill out. Yes, but it's not all chill out. There are some dance music you can hear, uh, maybe even rock music or flamenco music, uh, lots of speakers and presentations, um, uh, very cool party. Um, how long have you been doing that event? Um, I believe he's done it, uh, Three times, maybe. Okay. Um, yeah. And this year, obviously, they couldn't do it, but I think it's going to be back next year. 
I have to put that on my list of things to do when I'm in Croatia. Sure. It's a great place if you're a fan of, uh, you know, the Orb and System 7 and Mixmaster Morris and Dread Zone. And, uh, I mean, the, the artists that you can see there and meet there are, uh, you know, uh, endless, really. And uh, it, it's, it's a great opportunity because it's a very intimate environment, uh, maybe only a couple hundred people, uh, you know, and the beautiful area in Spain in the mountains at Youth Studio. So you get to peek into Youth Studio and see. Oh, wow. Know. Yeah, yeah. He's got a studio in Spain. So you can get to check out uh, his studio. And I got a preview of the Orb album there, the late, the last Orb album there when I was uh, there last year. So, yeah, it's an amazing environment, really, for a party and for a creative person. Yeah, that's excellent. That, that's, yeah, it, that's amazing. Um you know, to get back to the uh, the film, I guess the film cinema concept that we were talking about. Can you talk a little bit about you, the 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 cinema projects that you had worked on? Yeah, I've done a few actually o uh, over the years. Um, one of them, I did a collaboration with a guy in Ireland. Um, I had done this movie mix um, where I had taken all these. Uh, film samples and soundtracks and mix them together, putting the dialogue to one film over the soundtrack to another, uh, sort of making, putting the movies in a different sort of perspective and light. Uh, and this guy in Ireland uh, heard the DJ mix and he said, wow, this is so cool. I'm going to find all the movies that you've, you've used and I'm going to put the visuals on top of your mix. Um, so I was like, wow, that's awesome. And he started sending me stuff and asking me, oh, where, you know, because some things he didn't know where I got the samples from. Um, but eventually we had this whole 90 minute uh, film mix. Um, yeah, and it was, it was an, a really cool experience. And I've shown that at a few festivals in Europe and in the US. So, yeah. And that, um, to me, and, and I think Chill Out in general, tends to lend itself to, um, you know, a, well, I'm getting weird feedback loop here. It tends to, 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 to let it be um, more almost of a gallery experience, right? Um, in some ways is, is, are, is yeah. this, are you kind of recontextualizing? I mean, look, ch chill out as a, as a, as a genre, right. Has never been, uh, kind of like like any other club situation, right? There used to be a lot of yeah. chill out rooms at raves where people would chill out and come down or whatever right. they're doing, right? And then there was kind of a the whole trip hop thing kind of lent itself more to more like a cocktail party vibe and that kind of thing, you know, circa late '90s. Yeah. But there really hasn't been. Uh, there's been a ton of new amazing ambient music that has been released and a lot of artists who are more traditionally known for, for dance music that are veering quite heavily into ambient territory. I'm thinking of like Panther du Prince and Fortet and, and these guys that, that, that were for all intents and purposes, like big room, you know, boom, boom DJs. Right. And now they're like, yeah, yeah. everybody's kind of coming to the light again, but yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, when we're talking about ambient music, when we're talking about chill out, and we're talking about recontextualizing films that gets to a different place altogether. That feels like an intellectual exercise on the level of art gallery participation, right? Yeah. And I, I think these pieces can sort of work in different environments. And that was sort of my intention when making these pieces is that you don't necessarily have to sit down and watch the film. You can be doing things and the music can also be an interesting, you know, but if you turn to the screen, you'll see something interesting on the screen. Um, so it's not, it, it is more like, like ambient music is you don't necessarily have to concentrate on it. It can be something in the background, you know, mm -hmm. as the famous quote is like ambient wallpaper, you know, like wallpaper, it's a, uh, it's in the background, but you don't necessarily have to concentrate on it, you know. And our art can be like that to me, and you know, films are often like that to me. I don't necessarily have to watch a movie. Sometimes I'll put on a movie just to hear the dialogue or the music again, you know, uh, because I'm very much into music and sound, and uh, so that's sort of I think where where I came from with these pieces and. Um, I think, yeah, some of them can work in different environments. You know, uh, I, I've done these at Chillets, you know, uh, the camp yeah. out in Northern California. And, uh, 
they always get a good response there because it's, it's, it's also a great environment to just have people chilling out on a lawn, uh, uh, you know, under the stars, you know, watching a, tri a trippy video, you know, for 90 minutes with, uh, you know, crazy psychedelic music, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think these things can work in different environments. And I think, uh, you know, like especially now in this year, uh, we're looking for different ways to uh, entertain people and, put our work and ideas out there. So uh, I hope to see and be involved in more of these kinds of things. Looking at, I guess, again, the recontextualization of how things are, I mean, clearly right now we're at a place where we need to, out of necessity, rethink the models by which we communicate um, ideas and the way that we communicate entertainment and the way we communicate music and the way we communicate art and the way we function um, culturally has by necessity been forced. I mean, we are here on Zoom, although we would have to be on Zoom anyway, since there's just a slight mm -hmm. difference in our geographical location. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot to unpack there too, right? Just to talk about the channels and sort of the cyber, cybernetics. You know, I, I definitely come from that wave of 90s um, Mondo 2000-esque camp that really looked at sort of the network as, a, as a, an opportunity to build a temporary autonomous zones and to build intentional communities. Um, yeah. All of which were part of the rave scene and the outdoor music scene and the chill out scene and where that was all kind of intermingled with like psychedelic thought around kind of like Tim, like a kind of Timothy Leary 2.0 uh, kind of a thing. And um, it's interesting to me to have us be in a place where we are now back uh, where, I mean, we're, this is, this is about as tribal as it could possibly get on every level possible. Um, and while there are some concerns, <laughs> obviously politically, <laughs> at least here in the United right. States, yeah. you know, uh, I also ha am, a, I'm an eternal optimist and I feel like we are in a place now where we might be able to kind of realize the, the, the promise of the network in some way and, and the promise of kind of wanting yeah. to get back to that more, uh, underground but even even more than that almost like tribal uh yeah. way to kind of exist right. in the world and reprioritize yeah. well yeah i mean anybody can you know stream now and be an artist and you know or be a dj and stream their work online and show it to thousands of people or put it on youtube or you know uh that's opened up the possibilities you know for for everyone really you know um so I think that's, that's good and, it, you know, it can also be bad, I guess, for some people, you know, but I think it's actually a good thing, you know, uh, and, you know, especially now, you know, in a time um, for me, uh, I miss being, you know, able to perform in front of an audience. Uh, so it's actually, you know, even these little streams that I do, it's just sort of a little way I can sort of connect with people uh, and so and it's semi sort of live fashion you know uh but yeah i think uh the, the boundaries are going to be pushed even further you know with the uh um, virtual reality and other things you know virtual chill rooms you know that are already happening at festivals uh you know so oh, that's a thing that's a thing yeah i've seen festivals um where they have like a virtual audience you know in front of a dj playing the dj is actually there but you know you have like uh gen you know uh, these uh computer generated people dancing in front of the dj and it's <laughs> wow it's really strange it's like the sims uh, mixed with uh you know the club i have a i have a little boy who's seven and yeah. he's uh he's a big uh he's a big fan of uh uh oh man i'm drawing a blank um i can't believe this it's it's the place where they go um uh, not second life but uh, uh, uh it's, is it something is it like a sims sort of thing kind of thing yeah mm -hmm. yeah i can't believe i'm drawing a blank on this it's a big one anyway travis scott did a concert uh -huh. right 
in in this virtual environment. And I'm like, oh come on, really? Um, and it, it was rad. It was real. I was like, because you know, it's like a first person 3D kind of a game. Yeah. But then you walk over the bridge and like, tra- there's a big avatar of Travis Scott and he's yeah, developing yeah. and all these. And then you can also jump over. You, you you can be physically active in the virtual space while watching wow. a show. And if you've got the right setup, it's like full stereo, immersive. Wow. You know, Oculus Rift is coming out uh-huh. uh, immediately. Price point of like two hundred ninety nine bucks. Uh-huh. And that to me is even though it's kind of a. I'm really dubious about anything tied to Facebook. Sorry, Facebook. I know we're streaming here. <laughs> All about it. i'm just a little dubious of you know i don't know if you see what it did to the 2016 election then you'd understand except now we're in a virtual environment you know matrix style Uh, but anyway um it's a blessing and a curse right this thing you know facebook and social media and uh I mean, I wouldn't have met half of the people I know, you know, if it weren't for Facebook, probably, you know, uh, it's really brought my music uh, to a wider audience and and in general, it's made the world smaller, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, to where you can connect with artists, you know, uh, online and through social media, which I have done, you know. Yeah, I have as well. And I've had some really great responses from people mm-hmm. and really good interactions and really good engagement. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I I always, you know, I have, I'm a native to this world. I build things. I'm right. a UX designer. That's part mm-hmm. of my job. Yeah. Uh, and I, I get it. Uh, it, it. It's like, a, it's like anything else. It's a tool. You can, right. you can build a house with a hammer and you can also bash things with it you know i mean it's it it depends on what your what your objectives are i think but um but to the point of having media that's that is um going through these new channels and 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 kind of you know disregarding physical boundaries and um bringing i mean obviously how we communicate right now and how we're in touch we've been friends for years but you're in Croatia. I'm in Los Angeles. You know, really? like this is, you know, we're we're uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're on other sides of the earth. So this is a pretty kind of a magic thing if we know how to utilize it, and it's not right. controlling us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I actually the album I did before Serenity and Penite, I did all virtually, basically with a producer in the UK. I had never even met him, and we just exchanged files back and forth and. Uh, you know, the internet made it possible for us to do these things and have Skype sessions and, uh, you know, the album came together without ever meeting the guy, you know, so that's sort of been, you know, the magic for me, you know, is being able to work with these people, uh, amazing people that I liked, uh, you know, and never even having to meet them, you know, and face to face. Yes, I'd love to meet them face to face, but sometimes it's not always possible, especially now. You know. um, that's amazing. See, and that's that in and of itself to me is is one of those magic things. And I remember, you know, back when um, ISDN came out by Future Sound of London, mm-hmm. um, you know, it was uh, uh, yeah. we, it was one of those things that were like wh- it was just mind boggling. I'm like, what do you right. mean you have it on the internet? Right. You know, um, I just think the mythology of the network has been diluted by capitalism. <laughs> you know, in, in in some ways because. I remember, you know, when you talk about like that specific period and kind of the evolution of that, because there obviously there's you, there's Morris, there's the orb, there's all of these kind of core group of people that have kind of uh, held the torch and kind of kept that going um, mm-hmm. in that way. But on the other one end of the spectrum, you've got like, you know, uh, the big festival techno bros now. And that's, I mean, it's basically like a rock fest it's it's just there right. if you've been one they can be fun but it's they can also be absolutely fucking nightmare yeah. <laughs> you know um and then you've got people that are tried and true and have stayed in the underground but have thrived in that that type of environment and like i said i i definitely consider you and and alex and morris and like you know you guys are are kind of holding the torch for sort of that chill out thing and yeah. i think that's awesome i think it's great to be able to do it on your own terms but there's also something culturally there's something culturally incredibly important about maintaining, flying that flag and maintaining that and, and building a community around that, which I think you've been, 
you are a part of. You you are part of building that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, uh, you know, like I can't. Like I said, I came from a fan perspective. You know, I came from really loving the music first and um, watching, going to see bands and DJs that I liked, um, making sure I watched what how they mixed and. Um, but also kept my own identity as well, you know, uh, tried to, to, to um, keep my own voice, you know, when making my music. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think it, it's, it's important to meet people that, that you respect and uh, it can really help, you know, uh, take your music and, you know, you as a person to another place. And that for me was definitely the case, you know, as a, uh, I, you know, I, I got to meet my heroes and found out, wow, these people are human just like me. And uh, they also love music just like me. Uh, why can't I do that? You know, I want to do that, you know. And, uh, and now you are. And now I am. And it, it is it is a dream come true, you know. And, and it's not an easy road, but it's uh, something that I had, had dreamt about and actually visualized, you know. And as cliche as it, as it sounds, you know, uh, dreams can come true especially visualizing your dreams you know mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah well i you know i'm so interested in kind of your whole process because it's it's been so organic and it's been in a very real way kind of against the grain against how most people go about handling their uh the way that they function in the world in terms of like djing and shows and everything like that um mm -hmm. because yours has just been it's just there it's not that it doesn't feel forced it feels very organic it feels very much like you know um i i was having a conversation with um a friend of mine and we had gone to this uh virtual lecture thing um and they were talking about sort of why certain things uh resonate with people certain books certain movies certain you know, um, programs resonate and some people don't and, and they, and some don't. And what this opinion was in this lecture was that it was about authentic experiences about real authentic experiences. And I have to say, I've really, I don't have anyone in my camp that I don't have an authentic experience with. And I feel very lucky about that because I think over the years I've cultivated relationships and I've built relationships with people that um, whether they're painters or writers or musicians, yeah. or DJs or developers or, you know, yeah. uh, mechanics, <laughs> you know, these are yeah, people yeah. that I think at their core are authentic people. Um, and I've always felt that about, about your music and, and your, just the way you hold yourself and navigate the world. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, um, uh, I think to be, you know, a mechanic or to be, uh, teacher you have to live those things you have to uh hang out with other people that are into those things you know and in, in our case for me you know a big thing was 26 mix and tranquility bass because it was a a hub for me to meet other people into chill out music you know at this little monday night club in san francisco you know uh but it was lasted four years i was doing that for four years every monday night you know mm going to work in the morning, staying up till two in the morning, three in the morning, and then having to wake up at six in the morning and go to my desk job in San Francisco, you know. Uh, but that's where I cut my teeth and learned how bad of a DJ I was sometimes and <laughs> how good of a DJ I was sometimes, you know. Uh, learned to play in front of nobody. Uh, sometimes there was nobody there. I was playing to myself, and sometimes there was, you know, 50 people there. Uh, but I got to meet so many other DJs and was was for me sort of a hub and a place where I can meet other people and not just play music but socialize and uh, learn learn about DJing you know and how to uh, work a crowd and you know so it was sort of a place I think I cut my teeth really actually and got to meet cool people like you. Thank you, honored. Um, I uh, was curious about speaking of tranquility base. Whatever happened to Jonas? He's still online. He's on Facebook. Yeah, I Isn't still chat he? with him. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't, he's, I haven't connected with him in years. What, what, what's he doing these days? Uh, he's involved in real estate. Actually, he was in Mexico for a while, but then he moved back to San Francisco, and I think he's actually in San Francisco now, if I'm not wrong. Uh, but yeah, I don't think he's involved in music anymore. Uh, 
but yeah, that was uh, interesting. Him and Dagny uh, were who I started, and my friend Frank, actually, who was another mm -hmm. producer, the DJ that I worked with. I remember and, Frank. Where is he? Where is he? He's in Los Angeles, actually. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's down there. Um, but uh, yeah, he, he was the guy that introduced me to the orb and uh, suggested we do this night at uh, 26 Mix and we met up with Jonas and yeah, we were there, you know, four years doing Tranquility Bass, but it opened up a lot of doors for me in, in San Francisco, in the San Francisco scene at least, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, that's, that was, uh, he knew who I was always thinking about the other day who was, was, uh, out there and doing things for a long time and then sort of disappeared was Tetsu Inu. Yeah. He completely like, disappeared. I, I, nobody knows actually what happened to him. No idea. Uh, and like, like not on Facebook, uh, no. the last known digital thing, uh, on him is no. on Hyperreal, you yeah. know, the Hyperreal archives, which, I still get to from time to time. Um, yeah. I was just curious. It's just one of those things, you know, I mean, Jonah yeah. is still just, you know, he's got all kinds of things going on. Jonah Sharp. Jonah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and actually Morris and I have talked about Tetsu anyway, and he said he didn't know either. The guy just sort of disappeared off the face of the earth, you know, when yeah. I first moved to San Francisco, he lived in Sausalito. We actually hung out a few times. And oh, really? Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, it was just really he, – he put out some pretty groundbreaking ambient yeah. work. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. it was like and the last ambient, thing – nothing's ambient. on Discogs, you know. Yeah, ambient of Taku, right, was one of the, the ones mm -hmm. that I really liked a lot. Oh man, I mean uh, everything he did, I you know, he was just so methodical and so mindful and so, you know, Waterloo station, you know, come on. There was just yeah. some really really amazing yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff, amazing you know. Artist, yeah. Um could you tell me um I'm going to switch gears here a little bit and go back to some of your production work. Talk to me a little bit about um Lovers Radio. So like Lovers the whole concept and kind of where uh, you're Lovers Radio was actually uh, started with um, an app I have. Um, basically, it, it's it's a radio app. Um, I forget the name of it. Uh, radio Garden, actually. So it's, it's an app where you can listen to radio stations around the world. Mm. Uh, and I use this app all the time for samples or, or just to hear music from different countries. Um, so yeah, that started the whole Lovers Radio. I was playing uh, some ambient uh, synth, synth, uh, synth sounds and uh, started adding sounds from the radio and uh, just just picking different countries and bringing in the samples as I was playing. Uh, and that started the whole theme for Lovers Radio. And uh, yeah, that's the track that the Orb remixed. And um, I just released the, the Lovers Radio EP last month and yeah. So, uh, so um, this is an ongoing series that you're doing then? This is an ongoing uh, sort of series of remixes for Serenity Infinite. Yeah, I have another EP coming out probably in December, and then another vinyl edition coming out probably early next year that's going to have some interesting remixes on there, uh, maybe from Youth and uh, Morris and a couple other people from Liquid Sound Design. That's amazing. That's great, man. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this comes up in every interview just because it kind of has to these days. Um, how have you been ha like handling being um, under pandemic conditions? Like how, uh, I mean, I assume that, I mean, obviously shows aren't happening really. Yeah. Uh, that kind of has come to a halt, but how are you spending your time uh, during, during the pandemic? Um, I'd say he's going through slight moments of insanity with a uh, slight moment of intense creativity. <laughs> At the first part of the pandemic, it was very uh, intense being in a sort of, a, uh, you know, a foreign country and not knowing too many people and feeling very isolated, you know. And then we had a major earthquake actually here in Zagreb. Uh, during the first month of the pandemic, we're all quarantined, and then there's a big earthquake. I have you know, huge damage and cracks in my building and my neighborhood, and we had to rush out of the building. So 
we were forced we were forced to stay inside and then forced to go outside so <laughs> uh we didn't know what to do and it oh, was like man. the biggest earthquake like in a hundred and some years here in, in zagreb so I feel uh, a little, I feel a bit like bad luck, Brian. I leave San Francisco for the earthquakes and come here, and there's a huge just earthquake in a uh, hundred years. It's not funny, but it is. <laughs> that's so. That's yeah. The irony, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, so it's uh, an adventure. But as far as creativity, yeah, it's 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 allowed me. I, I just finished another album, which is going to be the follow up to Serenite and Um and I've been working on a lot of remixes and other projects with other people. So yeah, I think the creativity part has actually been good. It's, it can force me to, um, you know, sit down and do work. Sit down and be in the lab, which, you yeah. know, for every good producer yeah. DJ, that's the thing yeah. you need to do, man. You know, exactly. you, you can't get too caught up exactly. in the, in the party exactly. life. No, no, it's exactly. And I think it's, it, it's important to have your little area set up, whatever it is that you do. If you're a paint painter, have a little painting area in your house. If you're you know, uh, a DJ like I am, I have my DJ gear set up so I can just play records yep. and mix when I want to or make Same. music when I want to. Yeah, I can see it right behind Yeah, I was going to say, since my, since, my <laughs> divorce, since my divorce, my dining room table is now yeah, my studio. Exactly. <laughs> it's, all, it's all records over here. Yeah, <laughs> and I yeah. think that, that's great, and that's really important to have for an artist is to have that little you know, work area to be able to just sit, sit down and do work when you have ideas because you never know when those ideas are going to pop up. 100% agree, and I think it's um, – just an imperative thing. And one of the big reasons and the big motivations that I started doing this particular live stream show was that at first it was just like, okay, uh, Miguel from single cell orchestra lives here in LA and we hang out and, you know, he's a homie. And uh, we, you know, when this all happened, we were on lockdown, like locked down. You couldn't go yeah. any really, really go anywhere. There's no yeah, yeah. paper, like shit was dark, <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. And, uh, and I, and I thought, you know, I, I need to have some kind of outlet. I need to do something. I had been working on this record, couldn't really travel, you know, travel restrictions were in place. So I'm like, I need to, I need to find a way to con a connect with the, my people. And for the most part, I would say of the, this is number 12 uh, of the episodes that I've done for this thing. Mm -hmm. um, most of the people that I, I have on the show are like homies, <laughs> you know, or people I know yeah. or people that I, uh, are, 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 are like, uh, we had Sam Precop on from uh, uh, C and Cake, and and uh, he's got this rad, you know, new new project called Comma that is just this dope synthesizer album um, that's just amazing. And wow. but but I think one of the things that I really want to focus on is building community right now, bring, bringing people together, bringing like minded people together, having conversations about process, connecting with other people that are out there, but also you know knowing that you know coming from where again where where our community comes from that that when you connect these different pieces in different ways all of a sudden the sum is much greater than the parts right you get you get almost like a whole new um way of like like connecting the dots with with certain people and i feel very lucky to have done that and i'm so happy that you have been following this um this this chill out music thing as long as you have because the the results are amazing the records are fantastic um, you know you being in Croatia you being in that community I I just I couldn't be happy for happier for you Dylan and I, I wish uh, well I wish there was no pandemic or earthquake but yeah 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 no 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 problem man yeah and uh, I hope you continue to do this because it it is a really important thing to 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 do things like this and bring people together you know. Um, absolutely. So yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what, man, um, all joking aside, I will, um, I am going to get over to Europe as soon as I can because, um, Riz Maslin of Neo Tropic and small, cool. fish, small fish with spine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she and I yeah, are yeah, actually yeah. working on, um, uh, this other thing, which actually involves hardware that I might actually reach oh, out cool. to you about. I, I can't really wow. go into a lot of detail, yeah. but let's just say, Analyzer or uh, analog synthesizers are going to be involved. Wow, that's all I can that's say for now. Okay. But my point is, I want to get over and see Riz, and I want her to play. I want her to come over to LA. I want you to come to LA and play, and maybe we do a West Coast. I mean, I want to connect the dots on stuff and actually yeah. start like I, as soon as I can 
get out and play and tour and connect with my people that are that are uh, over there. Yeah. Uh, I want to go and um, I don't want to build. Here, I just want to build stuff. Cool. You're welcome here anytime. Thank so, you so much, sir. Ditto. Yeah, right, right back at you, man. Get over here. You Thank got a place. You. Thank you. All Thank right, you. Dylan. DF Tram, straight out of the the Croatian sensation. Thank you. Um, Thanks for having thank you me, so man. much, sir. Appreciate your time. Um, have a great uh, evening, right? So it's gonna. Yeah. It's almost one o'clock here, so it's almost ten o'clock there. So it's uh, it might be time to uh, start winding down for the day. Huh? Yeah. 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 All right, man. Well, we appreciate it. Have a Thanks good one. We'll be in touch. Yeah, have a good one, man. Thank All you. All right. Bye.